this wreck belong to Zip? Well, it's a wreck just like him, so I guess it could. Of all that's furry. Is this still a thing? The situation's getting even worse, Marty. Have you heard how the young mothers of the Cobbler District are forced to make a living? I have no idea what goes on in the hive, Sonny. I don't think I want to know. But you're still gonna tell me, right? Prostitution is the lesser evil. What's worse is that some folks have to sell their kids when they're still larvae. Wait, what? Why? They pay a hefty sum for each of them downtown. They sell them as gourmet food in the most expensive restaurants. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. We made this city, Marty. Clawville didn't do this to itself. Don't ever forget that. Peaceful, isn't it? because the whole town's probably drunk by now. Maybe that's the only way it can bear itself. Doesn't it remind you of someone? Shut up, Marty. <laughs> Got you there, old bird. There used to be such life around here before it became an insect ghetto. That was a very long time ago, Marty. I was a little chick, and the hop dog had the best pancakes in the entire city. Well, since Zip became the owner, the cook, and the waitress, I imagine it's all gone downhill. <laughs> True. But at least the coffee's good. That's right. I have no idea what that mongrel's doing with it, and I don't want to know, but its aroma is unbeatable. sure that thing's a dog? I always wondered. The name Hop Dog is quite a giveaway. Don't you think so, Mr. Detective? Sometimes the most natural connections lead us astray. Who said that? A natural born genius? <laughs> yeah, right. Look at the poor bastard. He's looking okay, Marty. Remember what we saw when we worked at the Hive? Wild ones. Don't even remind me. I'm trying to forget that shit every day. It's been even worse since. I guess you heard about the riots. Who hasn't? You know, people are afraid that the Great Fire will happen again, and those Hive houses are pretty flammable. I don't speak of the devil, Marty. But to be honest, I... I have no idea how this insect matter can be solved. I do. We just open the ghettos and let the insects live among us like they did for centuries. Your heart is pure gold, buddy. But you know it's not that easy. Clawville isn't what it used to be. Hey, pal. Can you hear me? Is he deaf? I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't understand what I'm saying. Or he doesn't want to. That's also very likely. Ah, uh, poor bug eyes. At least he's playing music. I mean, he's doing something. Most of the destitute take up drinking or drugs. Or worse. Hmm. You know about the light. You mean the light the insects believe in? Yeah, their afterlife. If they want to go into the light, they set themselves on fire. Yeah, I've heard that. Maybe it's not a bad way to go. That depends on your point of view. Ah, poor bug eyes. At least he's playing music.
place is deserted. Poor Zip. You're right. Yep, the guy's middle name is Bad Luck. That's for sure. Well, that's a good question, pal. What insight? The highlight of my day. Yeah, I can smell it already. How does he make the coffee here so special? Look at that mangy trash panda and tell me, do you really want to know? Um, you're right. As always. And voila, the master himself. What a finch. Uh, Sonny, he's a pigeon, not a finch. Don't make me angry, Marty. Okay, I was only joking. You still don't eat meat, old man? I'm a rooster, a chicken. Why the hell would I eat meat? I don't mean real meat, I'm not a lunatic. But a meat substitute? There's about 10 different kinds. Have you never tried any of them? Why would I? If I don't eat meat, why would I eat a substitute? Because you can, that's the point. Wild gods, Marty, stop being such a sheep. Do you fall for those adverts? Substitute isn't meat, Sonny, and if it's tasty, why wouldn't I eat it? I don't care what you eat, but don't be surprised when you lose all your feathers or you try to bite off your own leg one day. Sure, it didn't get any younger. Or prettier. You think he's still mad at us? Frankly, Marty, I don't give a damn. Hello, boys. Now, get the hell out of here while I'm asking nicely. Hey, is that how you greet two old friends? Hey, I'm not joking, Sonny. I got a shotgun under the bar. No, you don't, because if you had, we'd arrest you here and now. If there's still life in you when you're full of buckshot. Ah, it's going well so far. We're just here for a coffee, Zip, okay? Like old times. Nothing's like old times. Haven't you noticed? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it's quite noticeable. Shit. All right. And where'd you blow in from? We haven't been anywhere yet, but we're going somewhere. Everybody's going somewhere, right? Tell me, how much do you know, Zip? It depends. How deep is it? Bottom of the well kind. Goes down around Ibn Wessler. Holy hell! Wessler? You've dipped your wings in deep shit, boys. If you've got anything on him, don't keep it to yourself. We'd be grateful. Grateful? Maybe you're not gonna trash my joint this time, eh? You know, Ibn's acting strange nowadays. He always believed that if you want something done, you do it yourself. That's how it was for years anyway. And? But now, he left his real estate, the fish racing clubs, the casinos and the bars to his right-hand man, Mongrel Mick. And ever since, he's been kind of weird, bottomed out, brooding in the seediest joints of the city. Nobody ever knew him to be like this. Weird, huh? Yeah, weird. Do you think it's about a lady? It's always about a lady. Well, there is a woman. I knew it. But not like you think. Is this gonna cost much? Only a 
a favor, like the good old days. Okay, I'm in. been to that place? Of course, a hundred times. Everyone who matters in this city's been there. Sorry, guys. But then, it had a different name and a different owner. Business affairs, right? Yeah, that was the dark era, Sonny. I don't want to talk about it. Roger that. I've got to say, you've revamped the joint pretty well. Uh, after you trashed it, I had to. Look, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Zip. That ocelot and his gorilla. Baboon, not gorilla. Whatever. Sonny, <clears throat> watch your beak. So you owe me one until about the end of time. But I'd settle for you washing up here for a few years after retirement, Sonny. Mind your tongue, furball. So, Ibn's gone insane. Love will kill you in the end, they say. Seems like everyone's in a poetic mood today. You're one to talk, by the way. Huh? Why? So, about that woman. Is she really that dangerous? <laughs> what woman isn't, huh? Eh? No, Zip. I mean, really dangerous. She's got the most influential gangster of the city wrapped around her finger. She calls him her little furball. How dangerous do you think she is? Hmm. You didn't get any younger, pal. You're telling me? You look like you haven't had a good night's sleep since forever. To be honest, I've never had a good night's sleep in my life. <laughs> you will when the big sleep comes. And what are your plans? Dying behind the bar? Of course. You got a better idea? A couple, yeah. But somehow this suits you. You know what? Your mother's a goat. Natasha's a mysterious woman, a real cursed jewel, if you ask me. She came out of nowhere two or three years ago and landed on the stage of the millions almost immediately. Is that so? Interesting. Yeah, she's got a fantastic voice, makes men go crazy. But we all know that's not what's important. Then suddenly, bam, she got the whole club, just like that. But we know exactly how it was. I can imagine, yeah. Since then, it operates under the name The Czar Club, right? The old click is still clicking, right? Yeah, the club was renamed and remodeled. Everyone knows she was Ibn's lover, but she's not your usual canary. She didn't get involved in Ibn's dirty dealings. Then how exactly does she fit into the picture? Check this. A few months ago, the old rat pulled out of his own businesses and gave control to Mongrel Mick and his mob. Mongrel Mick? Doesn't sound familiar. Mick the Marauder ring a bell? Damn, that little monkey came this far? Uh, I think that little shit took advantage of Ibn not being himself. Which has something to do with this Natasha, right? That's my guess. Thanks for this straight dope, Zip. We owe you one. One? You owe me the price of a new coffee shop, remember? Okay, okay, whatever you need. Just call us. I cluck and will. Thanks, pal. Hey, I'm not your pal, Marty.
You sure talk a lot. And yeah, maybe the past is haunting me. Once a rat, always a rat, right? Aw, oh, come on, Zippy. Don't be so hard on yourself. You got out in time. And you've been living an honest, ordinary life since then, haven't you? Yeah, right. How lucky am I, eh? It's more than what many others get, believe me. What's this no insects allowed shit? You're not like that. What do you think? If I let one in, all of them will follow. And then I can forget my regular clientele for good. What clientele? There's no one here. That's it. Would you take even that away from me? What's this no insects allowed shit? The door didn't look like this last time. Yeah, because last time you tore it out and beat that baboon with it. Oh, yeah. I remember now. So that's why Zip remodeled the whole place. He had to. We didn't leave much of it standing. If I didn't know how nice we are, I'd almost hate ourselves. Welcome to the club, partner. Poor bug eyes. At least he's playing music. My condolences, pal. I see your cleaning lady died. Yeah, she set foot in the bedroom once. I haven't seen her since. I didn't dare to go after her. Oh, I wouldn't want to go in there either. But what's that smell? Ah, cigarettes and whiskey. Yeah, with a hint of dirty laundry, but no. This is lavender? Ah. Ah, now that's got to be the Ibanez dame. You know, the broad who gave me the letter. And the job, obviously. Ah, uh, pretty, huh? I can smell it. She's an exotic, too. An Impala, maybe? Furry hell. That's why Chief Inspector Bloodboil hates you so much. He's jealous because your nose is better than a clucking bloodhound. <laughs> the bitter old dog. He just hates all foul. Yeah, true. Except for Monica. Monica is a fairy, not a bird. So, <clears throat> what now? Well, let's gather my stuff and head to the club. We gotta find out who this Natasha is and what she wants from us. I mean, what she really wants. After you, boss bird. I wouldn't like to touch anything in here anyway. If it's okay, I'll just stand around and stare out the window. <laughs> sure, just do it quietly. I wanted to travel the world when I was a kid. But I think I'm going to end up dead in here, whether I like it or not. You're getting older, Marty. You look like shit. Ah, gee, thanks. I thought angels don't grow old. 
Ah, leave it, will you? Sure. Boo hoo. <laughs> When was the last time I was here? I don't know. Years ago. When Molly left. Whew, that was a... a wild night. Yeah. You know, Sonny, you can call me. Not just when you want to investigate some shady case from a shady dame, and you need a big meat shield to cover your ass. Times have changed, Marty. And I don't call anyone. All right, all right, Boss Bird. Whatever you say. Have you been there before? Uh, never. You know, it's not my style. It's too fancy for me. I'm more like the smoky, smelly, ramshackle little joint type. Yeah, same here. But we're not gonna mingle like this, right? We're not searching for a tailor on New Year's Eve, okay? We'll go as we are. That'll be exciting. Let's just stay out of trouble, okay? What trouble? That's the spirit. So she just turned up with a message on this flyer? And you fell for it? Maybe I was bored. Or maybe there's more to this thing than meets the eye. Yeah, there's always more. Maybe I just wanted to meet you, for old time's sake. That's not funny. <laughs> I've never had a good sense of humor. You know that better than anyone. That's for sure. So the Czar Club, huh? My city's on fire. Sounds good. But that's all? It's kind of weak for a clue. It's not a clue. It's just a guide. By the way, it's New Year's Eve. We deserve some fun, right? Well, that's true. But it's never that easy with you, Boss Bird. There's something you're not telling me, right? Nothing important, Marty. Ah, uh, yeah. If you say so. Oh, hi, Mr. Sinclair. How are we? Sinclair is doing fine, thanks. Anyway, you still talk to your guns? <laughs> yeah. And so what? Other animals talk to their plants. Crazy, isn't it? At least a gun has a soul. And it's useful. I can't believe you're allowed to walk around freely, Birdie. Oh, if you only knew what I'm packing right now. I don't want to know what's under your feathers, Marty. So, am I staring quietly enough? Well, the floor's creaking a bit when you shift your weight, so, uh... You're an asshole. You have what we came for? I just want to look around a little. I'm ready. Yeah. All right, Sonny. Then grab your map and let's hit the road. <laughs> 